Hello everyone, I am going to make a presentation on introduction to safety instrumented system SIS and this topic will be on the significance of SIS system over BPCS. This video presentation is taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly subscribe to the channel. We will go over the detailed view of BPCS basic process control system. What are the functions of the BPCS? Basic process control system are either active or dynamic. This is always making changes in the plant process and then doing the required control. BPCS have analog digital inputs and outputs, performs mathematical calculations and have feedback loops. Maintain or change the process conditions. Based on the requirement, it helps to adjust the pressure control valve to maintain a pressure or temperature control valve to maintain the temperature inside a vessel or adjust the flow and all. So, it is always varying and then taking action to control the process to the desired level. Basic process control system control helps to obtain best performance from the process and at times used to increase the performance to the maximum process condition limits that can safely be achieved. Hence, most failures in these systems are inherently self-revealing. What happens? Suppose the one reactor is designed for producing 50 tons per hour. Normally, under the normal operation conditions, it will be operating at 40 tons per hour capacity or 45 tons per hour capacity as a safe operation. But at times, due to the consumer requirement, due to the high demand of the product, that particular reactor may be required to make a high production. So, instead of 50, there will be a requirement to change it to 55. Actually, the calculations will be done to ensure that even the, at 55 tons per hour, it will operate safely without any harm to the equipment itself. So, then it will be increased depending on the plant requirement and management requirement etc. So, for those conditions, there will be requirement to change the control logics and then required to improve the output rating. So, for all such conditions, the VPCS control inside the program, the logics will be changed and then it will help to increase the maximum process limits as an end record, this is not always. BPCS are designed in such a way to flexibly allow frequent changes. Process example set points, PID settings like the control from manual to auto etc. require constant change as per process requirements, if it is a raw material change or output grade change. These are all conditional based on the requirement, there may be changes requirement and it will be required to be changed. So, that is why uh, as we see the BPC is, is uh, active and dynamic. So, it will be easy for the operation to change the requirement, change the set points etc. Part of the system may also be placed in bypass and other process may be controlled manually. There are multiple units in the process plant. For example, one particular control valve is having an issue and it may be required to operate it in bypass. I will keep the valves isolated and uh, make the system in the controller in the bypass mode and then operate. So, that is why it helps. A BPCS controls are operating at all times. They are not expected to have diagnostic routines searching for faults. As the control system is always in action, as it is dynamic, it is very difficult to make the diagnostic, robust diagnostics inside the controller. This is what it explained in the last bullet point. What are the functions of safety instrumented system? Safety systems are on the other hand are dormant or passive. Cis elements are silent while the plant is running during Emergency, it is called into action. Under normal state operation of the plant, the BPCS is taking control and it is doing the required changes and operating the plant on the required 
process limits. Whenever the process limits exceeds due to some reason, that time the BPCS control is unable to contain the pressure going high or temperature going high or the volume in the tank is going exceeding the limit. In those conditions, the next level of protection which is a safety instrumented system comes in action and then does the required action. That is why in the normal condition it is dormant. So, we are just doing an example over here. Example would be a pressure relief valve. Normally, the valve is closed. It only opens when the pressure reaches the set value. This is another layer of protection. Just briefly explained over here. And many failures in this system may not be self-revealing. If the relief valve is plugged, there is no immediate indication. It is a mechanical device. So, we will not be able to know. The PLC could be hung, hung up in an endless loop. Without a watchdog timer, the system would not be able to recognize the problem. There is a need for extensive diagnostics in dormant passive safety systems. As the, even though the controllers will be continuously processing and there is no, no action like the process input is not varying to give an output command like control system is not dynamically acting and giving an output always always running and doesn't uh, comes into action when the plant is in the steady state. That is why it is known as dormant system. Safety systems need to be kept to a fixed set of rules and access for changes are pre restricted and they must be highly reliable and be able to respond instantly when a hazardous situation develops. As this is a robot system and it is required to prevent any hazards, they, um, there are engineering stations available which is required to do the configurations and then any changes if required. For plants, there are different level of uh, category people are available like only the lowest level the technicians will be available, instrument technicians, or electrical technicians, mechanical technicians etc. In our uh, example, we need to think about the instrumentation people. So, instrumentation technicians will be available. Next, there will be instrumentation supervisors and further we have the instrumentation engineers in the plant and further next uh, instrumentation group leader will be there and further the department leader will be there. Normally, the instrumentation engineers who are responsible for that particular plant area doing the required changes on the safety instrumented system, BPC system and any other PLCs and all. Except uh, exclusively on the safety systems that each changes requirement will be having a access limit. So, based on which only the changes can be made like for having Authority who are having very good training on their system only can work on and then do the necessary changes. DCS or BPCS does not have that restriction. Anybody who are knowledgeable can go and do the work. We will see the functional differences between the BPCS and CIS. BPCS receive input signals directly from the process through sensors and instruments and generate output signals to control the process and its associated systems to operate the plant in proper way. Safety instrumented system is composed of hardware and software components used to control critical process systems that is refinery and chemical nuclear power plants. BPCS implements multiple functions including the management of process variables, alerting, monitoring and the provisioning of an interface of monitoring and control through a HMI. SIS devices are system responsible for facility operating in safety. They have no control or emergency procedures in case of abnormalities belonging to the process, sorry, bringing to the anomalies, bringing the process to a safe state. It is all an automated action only. Whenever the hazardous scenario is happening and the BPCS is uh, failing to control it, next uh, level SIS sensors are uh, uh, taking into action and then gives a logic command to close the sys valves. BPCS does have some inbuilt security functionality as it is considered the first layer of prevention in the protection of the process. In sys, processor communication input and output models are designed intelligently to overcome any external attacks. This is related to the cyber security attacks. 
and much more robust items of cyber security as sys systems is certified by iec isa cyber security system standards in the recent past one system had external cyber attack which had resulted in the unit shutdown so if there is any external attack by some malware there is possibility of system getting hanged or corrupted which may call for the plant shutdown so this is recent incident that's what explain over here it's not that uh, vpcs cannot have cyber attack but even though there is uh, something happening in most case scenario it will not hamper the plant operations only a part of the plant part of the, part of the controls will be failing okay we'll just go through the testing and certification requirements between vpcs and sys so these are the different criteria which is listed over here and we'll see whether it is mandatory or not mandatory certification for safety applications in case of sys it is a mandatory bpcs it is you know like optional it is not a mandatory one and redundancy the controller redundancy if you see the sys system mostly the controllers are triple modular there are two three controllers working parallelly each are having the same program and they are working simultaneously and bpcs in the in such case may have redundant controller but also it is not a mandatory requirement this is based on the process and process size and nature of process etc proof testing requirements for the safety instrumented system proof testing requirement is to be met as per the iec standards it is mandatory rs and bpcs system it is not mandatory it is again optional whenever only only particular loop in the just having a bpcs control has to go for a testing but again time limits may not be as strict as sys extensive system diagnostics this is what we talked earlier the controllers have more robust uh, intelligence and then they are to go through a more rugged kind of diagnostics running inside the processors input output models communication models etc whereas the vpc system it is not mandatory even though many of the manufacturers and many of the systems installed like across the plants have diagnostic facilities it is not as extensive as sys access control requirements on the engineering stations this is what i discussed in the previous slide for each system there are independent engineering stations available to make a program on the bpc system to make a program and changes on the sys system etc and there are hierarchies there to control the access it will be decided by the respective plant head and production owner so sys system have some higher level of hierarchy only people having much experience on the particular process plant and they are very thorough with the process and instrumentation safety instrumented system knowledge only they can do the changes in the program in the sys system whereas in bpcs system everybody have the right to do the changes field instrument redundancy based on the safety integrity level again this is a calculated one based on the layers of protection analysis etc so for the sys system it is mandatory for bpcs it is not mandatory bpcs can, uh, which is working as a safety uh, layer can work with an independent single instrument also and uh, this is a seat leakage requirement as per apa standards this is for the valves shutter valves need to undergo a seat leakage test and this is mandatory there is a apa standard like a iec iec and all apa is for american petroleum institute this has constituted a standard so based on which the valves which are in the sys loop have to meet the requirements of the seat leakage as per the standards available whereas it is it is mandatory for the sys system whereas it is not mandatory for the vpc system so the sys system is having overall much more ruggedness much more testing and certification requirements compared to vpcs thank you for watching